Good morning and welcome back to my channel, First World Traveller. Today I'm doing a slightly different video, one with minimal travel rage and much reduced ridiculous occurrences occurring throughout. This is my beginner's guide to arriving in a new country. Let's go. So this might seem a little bit sucking eggs, whatever that means, for a lot of people because you may do a lot of these things when you have an all-inclusive holiday. More on that at another point in another video. However, when you are backpacking, things are slightly different. So let me tell you a little story. 15 years ago, I was 19 years old, believe it or not, and I had never been even to Manchester, let alone on a plane. So I was a complete backpacker virgin, virgin backpacker, one of the worst kinds you can find. However, everyone has to go through that at some point. Therefore, I had no idea what to do getting to a new country. So I could have really used someone like me giving me three or four useful travel tips to put into practice when I arrive in a new country. So the reason things are different when you are looking at going on a two week holiday to Benidorm or a year away in unknown country throughout the globe is because when you do a regular holiday you have time to prepare the exchange rate etc etc the type of plug to use that sort of stuff these little things might sound silly but they are ridiculously important and can make a huge difference to how you land in a another country now, when you're backpacking, you will go from country to country to country, just like that, you know. A week ago, I was in Abu Dhabi, then Dubai. Now I'm in Bahrain, or Bahrain, I can't say that. So, you don't have the time to be preparing yourself, you know, doing these things. What do I do here? What do I do there? You have to make it very much a natural part of what you do. So, here are my three, actually four, major tips to arriving in a new country. Three really, not four. There was a one about plug adapters, but make sure you know what plug adapter you need when you get to a country, it's simple. Number one, customs. Now, anyone, when they see you arrive in their country, can spot a tourist a mile off, especially if you're as white as a sheep what is a sheet? I don't know what the saying is. Um, you look, you look like a travel virgin. You're looking at, you're looking around. You don't know where you are. You've got a bloody fold out map out like Joey out of Friends. You basically you're acting like a complete numpty. So the key is with anything backpacker wise is to be street wise. You know, and that in, that also applies to at customs. So I don't know about you, but whenever I arrive at customs. I automatically feel guilty, like I've done something wrong, like I shouldn't be in that country for some reason. And the mistake a lot of people will make is when the customs officer asks you why you're in the country, do not give tell them your life story. They don't want to know. All they want to know is if you're there as a tourist, on business, you're there to work, and that will then determine what type of visa they give you. So just say, I'm a tourist. Simple. The more you go on about, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, the more suspicious it will look. And the next thing you'll know, you'll be detained and deported back to your home country, which you don't want to do. That's tip number one. Tip number two, money. Now, we all need money to survive, obviously. However, getting to a new country, when, especially when you've been to another country for, say, a month, two weeks, and you're used to that currency or used to the exchange rate etc getting to a new country and realizing oh shit there's a different currency here i've got to get used to that and the exchange rate it can be a bit daunting especially for a first time traveler and it can have a lot of implications if you don't do certain things so before you leave to that country google what is the currency what is the exchange rate 
compare it with your home currency. So I always look up certain amounts. So what is the equivalent of five British pounds in whatever currency? 10 pounds, 50 pounds, one pound. So at least then before you get to the country, you know, we've got a rough idea of how much your money is worth, which will reduce the chances of you getting conned, which will probably happen as a backpacker. Now, the next part of this money section, this really annoys me. So when you are in a country and say you've got five days left, start to plan how you are going to spend the additional cash that you have. So don't withdraw a huge amount of money in that currency on the day before a flight to another country that doesn't have that currency because it's pointless. So try and plan your spending so that you have spent all of that cash by the time you leave that country. Doesn't matter so much about the change. Actually, yes, it does. The change. This is one thing that really frustrates me. So when I started backpacking back in the days or, and started traveling, I used to seem to develop a fascination with collecting coins from other countries. Unintentionally, by the way. So you would buy something, you would get some coins, you would chuck them in your bag. Next thing you know, you've got a bag full of different coins from different countries, which you do not want. So, when you are going out to get little things like a bottle of water or whatever, go through your bag, what coins have you got? Use the coins, use the coins. That is the biggest tip ever. Because the last thing you want is to be skint at the end of your trip, and you've got a really nice excursion or something you want to do, However, the only money you've got left is a bucket full of coins from Bolivia, Sudan, and Mongolia. You do not want that. However, saying that, having some money left over isn't always a bad thing because if you'd rather exchange some money at a travel currency exchange place, it gives you an ideal opportunity to quickly familiarize yourself with some of the local money. So for example, I'm in Bahrain, as I said. 20 is the green one, 1 is the pink one, 5 is the blue one, but I spent that yesterday. So the worst thing that can happen to a virgin backpacker is arriving in an airport, getting a load of money out at an ATM machine, walking out of the airport, looking lost, having no idea what the money is, and being surrounded by a local group of unregistered private taxi drivers who will just pounce on you like pigs in shit. The saying is actually flies around shit, but hey ho. Familiarise yourself with the flipping money before you leave the airport. At least when you then get in the taxi and you see the meter going up, you're not panicking and stressing about, oh my God, this is a rip off, because you have done your research, you familiarise yourself with the exchange rate and you know how much it's gonna cost you. Point number three, it's all about how you feel arriving in a new country. So say for example, you've been on a nice tropical island in Thailand for a month. You absolutely love it. You're used to it. You're used to the people, etc., etc. You're used to your surroundings. And then all of a sudden you rock up in Syria, probably not Syria, but somewhere else you get what I'm saying. And it can be extremely daunting, especially when you're going from place to place to place, new place, new place all the time. And you don't know the local customs, you don't know what you can and can't do, you don't know your surroundings. So, do not hold yourself up in a hostel or a hotel, scared to go out when you get to a new place. Yes, I'm aware I'm in a hotel room now. Explore your local area, see what is in the vicinity. For example, so you wanna find a local supermarket where you can buy some Maggie noodles, you wanna find a local laundry place where you can do your laundry if your hostel doesn't do laundry, and some local cheap restaurants if you fancy eating out and don't fancy eating Maggie noodles. But let's face it, Maggie noodles are the best. So in conclusion, these three tips are all about being streetwise when you get to a new country as a virgin backpacker. So let me tell you a little story, a little horror story. So when I was 19, I went to Sydney with two friends of mine. This was literally the second place I've ever been to in my entire life. We were walking along when we got there. We started speaking to some Australian guy on the street. 
seemed very nice. Oh, where are you from? London, etc., etc. Next thing you know, it turns out he's a heroin addict and he's asking us for money. Didn't mug us or anything, but um, we still had to give him some money. That totally shit us up. So, the question you will get asked all the time is, oh, where are you from? Where are you from? Oh, I'm from London. Oh, I'm from Los Angeles. I'm from Sydney. All of those things will mean to that person, especially if it is an underdeveloped, not particularly affluent country, that will mean that you're a rich Westerner and you've got loads of money, you shit gold and you eat diamonds on toast for breakfast, which I don't. I've got to stop using that gold and diamonds thing. I need to think of something else, don't I? Anyway, you can't avoid saying where you're from because it's pretty obvious you're from London if you've got a London accent. It does, you know, it's obvious you're not from a little tiny village in Sri Lanka because you clearly aren't. So just be wary about the conversations you're having with these people. Make it short and sweet. Yeah, I'm from London, blah, 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 off you go. Don't get into an epic, long, mammoth storyline about your life story, um, the fact that you drive a Porsche. Which I don't. I drive a Mercedes. You live in a ten-bed mansion. Again, I do not. Because next thing you know, you will be mugged and uh, completely destroyed and have all your belongings stolen. You, you won't. But it's just a little warning that that's what you need to do when you are speaking to those sorts of people. So just be streetwise. So those are my three main tips for arriving in a new country as a virgin backpacker. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope they're useful. Um, I am now probably gonna go out and not get mugged, not have all my money stolen and not get conned. Fingers crossed. If you'd like to see some more beginner's guide travel or any um, ridiculous travel horror stories that you can learn from then please let me know um, and I will do those videos so I'll speak to you all soon wink wink